Hello, I'm Russ Heinz. I'm here to show you how to do a 45 degree bolt solid plate splice. Here are the tools required to do the installation. The benefits of a 45 degree splice is it can run over 25% smaller pulley diameters compared to a 90 degree splice. It passes more smoothly over cleaners and structure and it spreads tension over a greater area of belt. The first step on doing a 45 degree splice is finding the 45 degree cut line. We're going to go ahead and prep the belt as we would making a 90 degree splice by making the center lines and making a 90 degree cut. From there, we're going to take our tape measure and we're going to measure the width of the belt. Here the width is 18 inches. So from the 90 degree cut, we're going to measure up that 18 inches and mark that point. Using a square, we're going to go ahead and connect that point to the edge of the 90 degree cut. And that's the 45 degree cut line. We've gone ahead and cut the first belt end on the 45 degree cut. We can go ahead and prep the second belt end using the same method, or we can use that cut piece and use it as a template for our second belt end cut. We want to go ahead and line up the edges and line up the center lines of that belt. And we'll go ahead and mark that 45 degree line. And now we have our 45 degree cut. After the cuts are made, we're ready to punch the holes. We don't skive before punching the holes because we want to ensure the template can be placed on a flat surface. When placing the template in, we're going to make sure the tabs are up against the first belt end and the edge of the template is lined up with the edge of the belt. We're going to secure the template to a wood plank using the nails provided. You can see I didn't place the nails all the way against the template, so I leave room for the entrance of the second belt end. We're going to place the second belt end up against the same tabs on the template, and we're going to line up the edges of the belt. And then we'll go ahead and secure the second belt end using the nails provided. Once again, making sure the belt ends are completely up against the tabs. If needed, you could angle the nails inward or outward to make sure that gap is decreased. The benefits of the template is the tabs provide a gap in between the belt ends, so after installation, you receive a tight, sift-free joint. Also, it ensures the right progression for each proper fastener size. Before punching the holes, we're going to want to spray silicone on top of the belt to help keep the power punch cool. We're going to take our half inch impact, install the quick change chuck, and the correct power punch for the fastener size selected. When punching the holes in the belt, Make sure that you don't go too deep into the wood or else you'll dull the punch quicker. After punching the holes, we're going to remove the template by removing the nails. And we're going to dry the belt so it's easier to skive. The benefits of skiving is to countersink the splice for better cleaner compatibility and a longer lasting splice. To place the bottom plates into the belt, we're going to flip over one belt end and insert the bottom plates from the bottom side.
after the bottom plates are inserted, we'll flip that belt end back over. And then we'll use the comb side of the template to align all of the fasteners. Then place the second belt end over the bolts. and push the belts all the way down flat. Next, we'll set the top plates onto the top of the belt. On thicker belts, sometimes the top plates are harder to get into position. If needed, go ahead and use a bolt horn to set those top plates in the position. When placing the nuts on the bolts, we want to make sure they're fully threaded. The Flexco bolt features a piloted end for easier nut installation. After inserting the nuts, we're going to want to cut three pieces of Flexco lock tape just slightly longer than the 45 degree splice. The benefits of using the Flexco lock tape help prevent belt ripple and decrease belt growth. Once we have those three pieces, we're going to insert one piece on the bottom side of the belt. And we're going to put two pieces on the top side of the belt. And we want to make sure the Flexco lock tape stays in between the teeth of the plates. After inserting the Flexco lock tape, we're going to go ahead and tighten one end plate down. And then while pulling the three pieces of Flexco lock tape, we're going to go ahead and lock down the opposite end plate. Next, we're going to tighten all the nuts so it lays each top plate fastener down flat, but not compressing the fastener plates. And we're going to start at each end plate, work towards the middle, and then opposite end plate towards the middle. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten all of the nuts down, once again starting at the end plate to the middle, and we're going to tighten them so we get compression on the plates. To break the bolts, we use the corresponding bolt breakers for the fastener size selected. To make it easier, we want to break the bolts on each corner of adjacent plates. And we want to use short, quick strokes. If a bolt gets stuck in the bolt breaker, go ahead and hit that bolt breaker until the bolt end flies out. Once the bolts are broken, we want to peen over the excess bolt, which will prevent the nut from backing off and will also penetrate the teeth deeper into the carcass. Following these quick and easy steps, you should now have the confidence to get your belt up and running with minimal downtime and a long-lasting splice.